Anyway, we move on to Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. So they got the title right that time. Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock continues with a search for Spock. And that's that would be the plot. pretty much. What that's it what is. they do. And yeah. Kirstie Alley is gone this time. Yeah, she's replaced with a different chick, who who we didn't even mention Kirstie Alley in the other one. So what's it matter if you're just watching if you never saw a Star Trek movie? Most fans know. Oh yeah, you should know. Let's hope. Anyway, Star Trek uh, 3 uh, concerns them searching for Spock, who was left behind in the last one. And if you didn't know, he died. Yep. He died in the second one. But they brought him back. Yeah. So so they bring him back in this one. Star Trek 3 is really not that great of a film. It well, is a film that makes itself up, I think, in excellent moments. When they steal the Enterprise, that is an excellent moment. When the Enterprise is destroyed, oh my god, it's a movie from 1984 or something, you should have known that. That's one of the best scenes they ever shot for the whole damn franchise. Right. They're looking at it up there and it's like, my God, folks, what have I done? And he gives his whole thing about that. He's like, what you always do? Just right. Turn death into a fighting chance to live. Right. But other than that, the stupid ass ending with, with uh, what's his name? What's Christopher Lloyd's in there as a goddamn Klingon for well, some reason. I actually kind of like the ending in the sense that it was like probably the first time Klingons ever had this personality where death was... Glorious, yeah. but aside from that, that's pretty much where the ending, the they're, good they're, stuff they're of the ending is terrible, though. Them on the fiery planet with the, yes. oh, I have had enough of you! Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't particularly good, but I have to say, there is a suspicion that the odd-numbered Star Trek movies are weaker than the even-numbered, and the yes. reason for that theory comes up is because it's pretty much true. Um, I will say, though, that out of all the weak, odd-numbered ones, this one's probably the least of Offender. Yeah, I would say Which that is overall probably it is probably a the good best. thing because you because if you watch two, you have to watch three actually. Yeah. You, you can't really yeah, yeah, skip three, it. Three is not an intolerable film. It's actually a pretty decent film. It's just it doesn't it pales compared to the second one and the follow up of the fourth one. Yeah. Overall I give Star Trek three a, a three and a half stars. I enjoy it. Give it three. A recommendation, not a high one, but a recommendation. Well, and you gotta see it to get to number four. Yep. And number four now, now I'm going to take the range from you a little bit because, despite what some people say, number four is one of the best Star Trek movies, and with good reason. Yes, it's about them trying to get to humpback whales, which, every time I say it, I just laugh a little to myself because it sounds so silly, but somehow yeah, it gotta, works. There's got to be a context the way you say it. There's a probe, it's coming toward the Earth, it's speaking, yeah. and nobody can understand it. It's destroying a bunch of shit, and they figure out it's trying to talk to humpback whales. Pretty so much. they got to go back in time to 1986, which happened to be when they made the movie, ironically enough. Yep. That's not ironic at all. No, it's but not. But they, they went there to get humpback whales. Yes, it is the most lighthearted, and it is an extremely enjoyable Star Trek movie. Upon rewatching it multiple times when I go through it, I don't appreciate it as much as I did when I was 10. But I do think it is a very funny film in the sense of Star Trek humor. You know, for a Star Trek movie, it is very yeah. funny. It well, clips along at a brisk pace, and it's yeah. a good it's a good change of pace. Well, it also has some of those little social commentaries that were actually absent from the previous two. One of my favorite scenes, and some people, you know, they never pick this up, but one of my favorite scenes in this movie is when they're on the bus, sitting across from the two punk rockers who are playing There's the music the load. The, the, the one. It's been a while since we've seen them. Yeah, but anyway, here on one side, it's like you have a guy who's trying to stand out from society, and then you have on the other side, people who really just do stand out, <laughs> and yeah. it's kind of a nice little contrast. There's some, there's some interesting stuff in the movie. The, my, my favorite thing in that whole film is, is Spock trying to learn to cuss, and he can't do it, and then very <laughs> later in the film, he finally mm. gets it down. Yeah, like, or the hell's the power one damn minute out of That was a good scene. Or, there, he, can't, or he can't lie about liking this, this film. Food. This film, in my opinion, still has a problem that the third film has, which is that they drag out the ending. The third film had this whole horrid scene with the... With the Vulcans and the bringing Spock back, like last like twenty minutes it seems, which is really only yeah, ten. Yeah. This movie ends with this underwater thing with Kirk being heroic and having to let the whales out of the spaceship. It and it, it, it was it, not, it, it it paled it, it just it, it shouldn't have taken down. that long to get the whales. Yeah, off the and they ship. did, and then when they get out, they talk a whole lot with it, and, and it's a, it's a little too long. But at the same time, they actually did add in a very excellent scene afterwards when they get the new Enterprise, where they go and they're like, "Oh, what's a ship gonna be?" And they fly over the Excelsior. And there's the Enterprise. You're like, hell yeah, they got yeah. the new Enterprise. And then they take off and fly right into Star Trek V. Yes. And I'll let you take that that one. Be Wait, did we grade four? We, oh, no, we didn't grade four. What would you think four? Four and a half stars. I actually give, I give that a solid four stars. It's a good one, but it's not 
not it's not right so